Hi, she's Trixie, and I'm Sarah, and this is Our Yarn World, a place where we, we come to share the love of yarn crafts and all that it gives us and what we hope it gives you. We're on episode 132 today, wow. and we are now in the midst of April. We're finally getting into real spring, I feel like. Um, um somewhat. <laughs> it started spitting snow today again. Yeah, well, i It's I'm, not staying, no. No, and you know, the whole... April showers bring May flowers. So yeah. we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> One day at a time, we're getting into nicer weather. Yes. So yes. it's going to be good. Um, but let me tell you, this week has been crazy. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but with um, what would have been the normal Easter celebration uh, uh, over the weekend and just going into spring break for us, for the kiddos, my household just got hit with illness, so we weren't really able to do much besides stay home and just try to relax. And with the kids, both kids being home, it's just one of those things where it's like everyone's just been stuck inside. And despite the fact that that's been kind of its own good thing, it has its ups and downs, you know, cabin fever and all that. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we are trying to enjoy being at Nana's house after being almost nowhere else for a full week. <laughs> and my goodness, since you guys last saw me, I've practically just been at my house. I haven't moved. I right. haven't done anything. It's been crazy. Oh, she, she's well, done stuff. Uh, <laughs> Believe me, you're going to see what she did. I, I guess I misspoke. <laughs> I want to say that April is stitch away stress month yes. so we are going to be focusing on that for this month um, for the next four weeks and um, and so you know we expect um, uh, tips and tricks and projects that talk about comfort um, things that bring you joy things yes. that will help you stay in a good state of mind Let's, let's try to encourage each other to make crafting not feel like a job. Right. But like the hobby it's supposed to be. Yeah. The fun it's supposed to be. Also, I know um, that uh, our videos come up on Fridays. And um, maybe some of you wait until later in the week to, to watch them. But Monday, the 8th, um, is supposed to be... Um, an eclipse now it's not going to be the whole United States but it's it's certain parts and we don't know where everybody's located so maybe you're gonna be able to you know to enjoy that so we're just um, we're sitting here um, envious of you guys because we're probably not gonna be able to see it but uh, you know, go to Google, look up uh, the, uh, the, the areas, uh, the areas. There should be a, it's normally a zone that will be covered yeah. across a map that they'll be able to kind of show what area that it will v be visible to. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of fun too. And I yeah, just no, want to bring that up. Thank you. That's yeah. awesome. I, I feel mm -hmm. like I've heard about it and I just never really pay attention to it. You know what that? I heard? Uh, that um, there is supposed to be eight different cities named Nineveh that are supposed to be affected by this. <laughs> that 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 the eclipse is supposed to go that's, through. That's funny. So I think that's kind of neat too. Anyway, I have finished the reading show, <gasps> oh. and so. Um, Do I need to move out of the way? No, I. I think it's going to be something I'm just going to love. It fits over my shoulders. <gasps> Look at that! It, it goes down my arms, so it comes right down to my wrists. Oh my gosh. And it hits, let's see, um, below my back. So it covers, it covers my back. Yes. And so for the last three rows, which I did last night, I decided why not have a little fun with it. <gasps> so do. I did the box stitch um, for the last the last two rows, and uh. or the uh, 
three, two, and then the very last row I did a single crochet just to finish it off. Okay. Now, that being said, it kind of curled it at the end, but I don't mind that because it curls in on me. Yes. And it curls in on my back. And so I didn't know that was part of the design, but that makes that sense. That definitely is. And so um, if you decide to try this, let us know and let us see your version of it. Yes. My feel very free. this is my very first one. It's it's all in Super Saver Jumbo uh, Red Heart in the colorway Black Light. And I had two jumbos that I rolled together, and this is how much I have left that I decided not to use because it just would have been too long. It would have it would have gone past my arms, I, even though hers does. I it would have it would have just been too much for me, and then I you know it wouldn't have been very fun to wear. This is the only shawl I've ever made and own. I know. Yeah, that I think that I would be able to wear mm. anywhere that I wanted to wear it. And um, I just, I, I love the colors. I love the way they worked up. It's, it's fun, it's colorful, and it's vibrant, and it's springy to me. Um, now, Sarah also wants one, and I would, I'm going to make one for her. But, hers is going to be in Mainstays, which is a uh, Walmart brand. And because Walmart does not do color names, they just do numbers. This one is number 13. It's just black. Yeah, it's black. It's a black worsted weight. Yellow. I'm going to get another one of these because I think two is going to do it. But, I'm pairing it with... So my some, mom, uh, my mom asked what color I was going to want, and I some, said I love black, and she said black is a little too hard for her to work with. So I reminded her that she had done the whole pairing with like a, with a uh, Aunt Lydia yarn, an Aunt Lydia yarn, and so she found red in her stash. Yes, and, and I have a Ziploc bag full. So I think we're going to do black and red for Sarah's reading shawl. I'm super excited for this. One. I'm going to remind you that this is um, Ophelia Talks video, uh, her her pattern. Um, Anya from Ophelia Talks. And um, she does box stitches every so often in her own pattern. I did not do that. I just did double crochet until I got to the very end and then I did a couple of rows of back stitch. So that's the difference between hers and mine. And um, I think it turned out beautiful. Yes. And then I think that's about it for now for me. So what have, let me just say, on the side of the camera, my daughter has a table full of things to show you. And they are cute and adorable and just so springy and nice. I just love it. So, are you what have you done? <laughs> well, <clears throat> as an update, um, I am showing you what I have from yes, last week's projects. So I was showing you guys that I was trying to get a whole bunch of banana, uh, bunny peeps, sorry, not banana, bunny peeps, and um, uh, cheat, uh, uh, chick peeps. They are like the Easter treat, marshmallow treat. And I was make I made a couple of them last week, and I had made like a blue, and I think I made a purple, and um, like a yellow peep. I can't, I think is what I had done. 
Um, my son ended up taking the yellow uh, chick peep, and my mom ended up taking the pink peep that uh, uh, a bunny peep that I had made. And uh, no one took the purple pe uh, a bunny peep yet, so I was like, okay. I can try to replenish my stash because I had had three and I was hoping to make a whole bunch of them for um, Easter, though I wasn't able to go because of being having my household be sick. But it was funny that I had made three by the time I got to see you guys last week and then two of them were taken almost instantly as soon as the camera was taken. <laughs> it was... I got the pink one. <laughs> um, and then my daughter's like, I want a pink bunny. So she came home from school, realized that I had made a pink bunny. She wanted one, so I had to make another one. So she has one too. And this is what's survived outside of that that has been made. So right now I have two of the yellow chick peeps. Well, you have. And then I have. You have a yellow and purple chick peep. You said two yellow. Oh, my bad. I meant just two chick peeps that are not claimed. They are a, per a nice, la a light, like, lavender. lavender purple, and then just this really nice yellow. And then I have a blue peep bunny, a purple peep bunny, a pink peep bunny, <laughs> and a <coughs> yellow peep bunny. Oh, so cute, all oh, friends. So my hope was to make a whole big basket full of these. Not just the six I have, but like a huge basket full of them. And so that when I went to my family get together, I'd be able to kind of offer that as like a fun little toy that the adults can enjoy just as much as the kids. Because exactly. it's just fun. It's a nice little uh, like office ornament or whatever. And it's an easy to store decoration that can just be put in a box that won't go, you know... It's not going to go bad. No, you? no. And it's fun. And it's a fun representation of a, a rather uh, great time of the year. Yeah. The holiday. Um, so I, I, when I realized I wasn't going to be able to go, and I also realized that I didn't have a lot of stuffing left, um, cause I told you guys I was planning to make these until I didn't have any more of the safety eyes. Right. But what ended up happening was that I had to stop because I ran out of stuffing. <laughs> so, did that. And then I realized that I had baby blanket uh, that I promised I was going to make for friends that are expecting. And um, one of them is much sooner along. So, uh, they wanted a baby blanket in, like, an oatmeal color. This is their third boy. So, they, you know, they have an, uh, an array of a whole bunch of stuff. So, I wasn't going to just make them just anything. I wanted to make them something they wanted. I realized that they probably weren't going to have a baby shower. It's their third boy. They have a lot of stuff uh, for, the, uh, for the baby probably already. But I figured I wanted to make them something for them uh, regardless. And um, they said oatmeal, and I thought that that was a very interesting color. And they decided to, I decided that I would do oatmeal by going with what was the Burnett blanket yarn. It wasn't the baby, the baby blanket Burnett yarn, just the Burnett uh, blanket yarn. And we went with the colorway cream, and it was a speckled, it was in the speckled version. I do have the... Uh, I do believe this one was in speckle, yeah. So this would have been in their Burnett blanket speckled, and it was in the colorway cream. Yep. And um, I made this baby blanket. Cute. So it's just a big, huge granny. It was a granny with um, this edging that I did, which was at every hole at the edge. I did, uh, I don't remember what they're called. A popcorn stitch? No. It starts with a P. 
I don't know what it's called. I can explain what the stitch is. Pretty much, I slip stitch across the edge. The pico? Yeah, that whatever that the, whatever that one is. But pretty much what I did was I chained up two once I ridged a hole. And then I slip stitched into the second chain that, uh, from the hook that I made. And then I slip stitched back onto the edge. So it was making all these like nice little detailed edges. It's, it's and nice. it just, I felt, I, it's a boy. I realized that the, uh, Normally, a lot of baby blanket edges have like that seashell, half a seashell, yeah. and I thought that that would look pretty, and I realized that that could work for a boys one too, but I felt like the way that this blanket was coming out in its simplicity, like I wanted to make a rather elaborate baby blanket with this, and I was looking up a whole bunch of patterns, but this yarn, this specific type of yarn, wasn't working very well with very fancy granny squares patterns. I had had a whole bunch of them that I was making beautiful Afghan uh, squares that I thought I could make like a nice, you know, nice uh, four uh, ten inch squares that were going to be these beautiful um, uh, beautiful pieces of art that I could sew together and make a really nice one. But the yarn wasn't telling me to do that. Eventually I, had, I kept ripping it and frogging it out and realizing that this is what it wanted me to do. It wanted to just be a regular granny. My husband was like, I thought you were going to do something like what we had been gifted, which was this kind of this similar pattern. And then I did this edge and he's like, this is perfect. This, this, this looks absolutely perfect. And it just looks so nice. And it's, and it's kind of weighted. So it's going to be oh, nice. Oh yeah. For the yeah. Um, and then the second thing I made was this one. Now the other couple that were making, this is their first baby. So they're, you know, going to be a little bit more particular on what they want. And they're having a girl, I do believe. Yeah. And, um, they wanted sage green for their, for like their color and their theme. And I thought that was a very pretty color. Now in the Burnett yarn, they, I didn't do speckled with this one. I ended up just sticking with the Burnett blanket yarn. Let's see if this is the right one. That's not the right one. It's this one. Um, so it's just like I said, the Burnett blanket yarn. I got this color, which is rather beautiful. Um, see if I have it right out here. Yep. It's this, this, it, it end up being their bright sage. So how perfect is that, that I was able to find yeah. a sage in this color, uh, in this, you know, sort of yarn. Cause these yarns don't always have your exact color. Like they don't have the variety because of how they're made. And then I just end up getting, again, a, uh, you know, the brunette blanket in their white, which is Blanco. So, and with that, what I did was I wanted to do something a little bit more extravagant with their blanket. I realized that the granny stitch worked up really well with this. So I want, uh, with the last blanket. So I wanted to make something in the same sort of size scale. But I wanted to be able to kind of offer up the variety that using both colors, both the sage and the white would be able to offer. I kind of wanted to do something like a, uh, kind of like the ripple, ripple or the wave or whatever that, that, that pattern is called where it's kind of like the little V's and the, right. you know I, what I'm talking about? I, I do. But Chevron. I, Chevron. Um, but I wanted it to be even on both sides. So I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of times when you start a chevron where it's like a W, at the end, the, the ends are going to be following that pattern. They're going to end off with um, an, a, a, a half of a point and then go on because yeah. of how you follow through with that pattern. So what I did was I did four granny square blocks. I tied the corners together. Oh, and then I worked out from the chevron on both sides. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that both ends would be the same. So this is one end where they both have these four ends. And then this is the other side that has the same 
ending because of starting in the middle you can see the blocks right and then the wave going this way and the wave going that way right do you see and it then, and then put it in the middle again see she's got blocks right here and then one's going up can you yep. show them going up and then it's going up and then, and then the waves going down so I thought, because I got inspired by that idea, because I saw on Pinterest there was these people that were uh, doing that, where they were putting their uh, their blanket, uh, their uh, granny squares that they were making on their uh, on a diamond, and they were tying off as at the points, and then they were doing the granny um, the granny chevron uh, pattern off of those edges and I thought that, that was really cool but like I said it was one of those things where it's like I wanted it to have like that symmetry right so being able to do that where I just did it from the middle and did it both sides I thought made this blanket look really cool and then at the end I bordered it with solid sage and it ended up being roughly the same size as the other blanket so I thought this was a really interesting pattern. Now what hook size do you use for this? Okay, so for both of them, they suggest to use a eight millimeter, so okay. like a, an L or a, um, an 11 uh, US size, but I've been using a nine, which is an N, because my, st uh, my gauge is so much tighter. Yes. Yeah. So okay. I've been operating off of going one, uh, one size, one size higher because of my gauge. And that's been working rather well for me. Um, this pattern is something I made up off of the inspiration of my idea with the... Um, uh, with what I've seen other people do. I don't know if I've seen other people do it in the same fashion as this. I'm thinking about trying to make this a written pattern that I might be able to start making patterns and writing them up on an Etsy store. So um, I will update you guys on that. Yeah. I will. Yeah. I plan to try this pattern again on uh, with a little bit more repeats per color so that it's a little bit easier to see. I feel like the camera still showed the pattern very well, but only making a one repeat row for um, to be able to show off uh, the, the ripples or the chevron when it could have been a little bit more starker and solid um, might be better done with acrylic yarn than or doing it with this blanket yarn. Right. So I'm thinking about doing it again and seeing if I can get a beta stitcher to um, try it out before I put it online. Right. So, it's just an idea. But I had a whole bunch of, I kind of realized that I wanted to make a stuffy to go with it, because you know me, I love Aragurumis, and I saw this kind of toy style for uh, baby argurumis where it's like the head is stuffed but the body is kind of limp it's not it's flat it's flat it's not really having any sort of form to it it's just evident so it kind of is like a, a toy that can be snuggled with but it isn't really fully cushioned just the head is and I thought that was very interesting and perfect for babies right and so obviously like I said my friends that are getting the, uh, this blanket are expecting much sooner and so I decided to get them done first and I saw a whole bunch of uh, animals that I was kind of leaning towards and I offered them up a list and they chose one in particular now I decided I wasn't I thought I was going to buy a pattern for this and here's why because I really wanted to um, I love to support other uh, other creators, other designers, other yarn crafters, and I love to be able to see what they get. Like I obviously bought these patterns and such, and I was looking at uh, buying patterns for the blankets to you know have a, a, a something to go off of, but the yarn spoke to me. And allowed me to be able to kind of interpret what it wanted me to do, so I was able to do that. <coughs> Pardon me. But with this, 
I was able to get inspired just by the image itself of what other people had done and this sort of toy style and I was able to make my own and they end up saying that out of all the lists of animals that I knew I could do that would be really well suited with the same sort of oatmeal speckled yarn that they wanted a walrus and so I made up my own pattern again for this design this took a couple tries I'm not gonna lie but he turned out He's really so cute. cute so using all burnet blanket yarn um, this one was the speckled one the, and the cream I used their brunette blanket and their Blanco, their version of white, and their charcoal, which is their, uh, our, our coal, which is their black. And like I said, I outlined the eye in white and did little, um, little eyebrows. And yeah, I, I did write down the pattern as I was making this guy. And like I said, it's just supposed to be something that you can tuck under the arm and kind of cuddle with. You can, and my mom said, that, you know, the kids might lay on this and, you know, have something to play with with this. Um, my kids seem to like it, so I think that this is going to be a good one. Um, but if you guys think that this would be something that you would like to replicate, I can definitely... Um, supply a pattern and possibly start getting an Etsy store made because I've been told for a while now that my ideas might be something that can be well you know written out patterned out tested yeah. and then you know put out there so that people can enjoy them too so we will see but yeah this is this guy with the sage and the uh, white color over the course of this week I plan to make a dog in this kind of style, um, in this uh, in this kind of snuggly, um, our groomy toy pattern for the baby, um, the 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 couple that is having the girl that are getting the sage blanket, um, uh, they have dogs and they're dog people. So I figured the dog, without even having to ask them, was going to be the right one. That's what I'm feeling for them. But I figured it was good asking. Uh, a, a family that already has had boys in the past, they were like, we have never had a walrus toy. So this just felt right. And yeah. my mom thought he was cute too. So Yes. And I thought of a name for him, if you want me to say it. If not, I won't. Um, I was, uh, she, go ahead. I thought maybe he looks like a little Hugo. So this is little Hugo. Or Hugo. So, so yeah, he's a it's cutie. really cute. So um, you might see more of him later. And um, where I'm at right now is that I am been looking up ideas. I've been really taking inspiration from crafters on Instagram, um, on YouTube, just everywhere. Anything that's crochet related, I uh, crocheting and knitting, I have been just absorbing it and seeing all these different ideas. And I was seeing someone get ready for their marketplace and I saw this little toy and I knew. <laughs> This was, uh, I, I saw this and I knew I had to make them and since last night I've made four so fun fun this one I love um, so how about you explain how much you are really excited about me showing and presenting this as I get my kids to you know sit back down okay yes. spring break and all they're just not listening so I never even knew that she was making these and she showed me this morning, actually Olivia did, and she showed me the little uh, character and it was so cute in the car she was showing me and then um, uh, Canyon had one and he showed me his and my mom or my mom uh sarah asked me if i wanted one and you know after showing me hers and i'm like yeah i want one and then she says well what color eyes 
Now that was the decision that got me. I'm like, I don't know. I no, no. Olivia has red and green, a red eye and a green eye for Christmas. Christmas. Uh, Kanyo has a blue and green. A blue and green. I did eye. yellow. She did yellow, and I I thought hers looks very very um, put together. Yeah, hers is very. I um, think if you had done nice. green or blue, that might have been more in tune. Oh, I love mine. And so um, I got to choose the top color. I got to choose the, the body. body color. And I got to choose the eye color. Now, I chose yellow eyes just like Sarah has. But my top and my uh, bottom are different. Well, my bottom is the same as all the rest of them, which are white. But so cute. They're so cute. Have you shown it off yet? Nope, I haven't even told them what it is. I said it was a character. Okay. Thank you for your patience. My little ones are just, they, they're on spring break. They're, they're four and five and they are doing their very best. So sorry if you've heard some interruptions, heard some small little voices, or seen us kind of gaze off screen or have some body language. We're just trying to work through this, but we appreciate it. So. It is a little mushroom. That's a fidget toy because it... <laughs> he kind of blows his top. It's called a <laughs> poppet mushroom. And look at his face. He's so cute. <laughs> so I had leftover of that speckled blanket yarn and I used the white Blanco a blanket yarn and made mine. And like I, my mom said, I used yellow safety eyes and then just kind of outlined a little face for him. <laughs> He's just so cute. And mine has the, the sage this, color. The sage color with the white. With the white. And then I've, I chose the yellow eyes as well. My daughter wanted, uh, was the first one to combine the sage and the white that I made, but hers has a green eye. And a red eye. And a red eye, making it much more Christmassy. And my son chose a black, uh, the black with the green, which I feel seems like very Frankenstein, kind of like a yeah. like a t a cartoon zombie. Oh, I but kind he, of love it though. But he chose a uh, a green eye and a blue eye, which just <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like I said, just it's a puppet toy. And like I said, uh, um, I and uh, I was just in love. I was just like, oh my goodness! And I was able to find a YouTuber that uh, showed how to make it, had the written pattern, said that these were really easy to sew up for markets. And like I said, I've already made four of them. I'm literally working on my fifth one right now. Um, my next combination is going to be a black top uh, head, uh, you know, mushroom head, a white body with red eyes, and I figured that I can might be able to make him little <laughs> vampire face. I feel like for uh, for like Halloween, a green and orange one with like oh, a jack lantern yeah. face. Yeah. Like he so you can make these for all the holidays, and they're just great little toys for kids. I honestly think that if, like, because if you're not a fan of safety eyes, these are, you could sew on buttons, you could even just sew on an eyes. They could just be plain little mushrooms that just yeah. can be played with. They yeah. could just, you know, there's nothing to it. Um, it's a very simple pattern, can be worked up within 20 minutes to a half hour. Um, once you get really good at the pattern, you can pretty much memorize it. I've written it down here, but I will probably link the person that I uh, yeah. got their video from. They, I think they said they had an Instagram, that's where their written pattern is. I think there was a link in the description for that. And they just said, hey, you know, tag me what you're making. Like, um, you know, a lot of crafters just like to see, like, like we do. We yeah. want to see what you guys are doing. We all draw inspiration from each other. And so, yeah, I've made two blankets, the bigger toy. I'll be making a doggo here in the next, uh, the, within the next week. Um, I made the six um, Easter-related toys. And then I've made these... 
these mushrooms. Four mushrooms. These four little mushroom people. Hi. <laughs> so 13 things since last time. Yeah, and I'm wow. working on number 14 right now. And I have a lot of things in the works I haven't even told to anyone about yet. Yay, we've got a lot going on. At least to the camera. But so, yeah. <laughs> now, isn't it? Stitch, Stitch Away Stress Month is kind of perfect Mom, for this Mom, little guy. Mom, hold it like this. No, yep. Squeeze it. Squeeze that. <laughs> I'm not doing it right. Oh, there it goes. Just, just like. Right. <laughs> She's just having too much fun. There it goes. <laughs> this is a, such so, a good no. stress reliever. And so. it's just a lot of fun. It makes you smile. And if you're looking to possibly do marketplace uh, stuff, these things sew up fast. They can be made with just regular acrylic yarn or this blanket yarn. Just follow along with what uh, a needle size based on your tension will work with both the yarn and just how you normally work. Right. And these work up really nice and fast and are fun. <clears throat> and honestly, these are fun little additions. These could be stocking stuffers. These could be Easter bags get stuffers these you can, can do be, anything uh, I mean you can make them for your class from a kids if you have a kid that's about to have their birthday in class you can make a whole bunch of these for their classmates for fun Jeez, like, you can make it for the teachers because she needs that stress relief too yeah honestly it's just <laughs> great little idea so uh, yeah and I saw some people that were also putting like little uh, um, um, octopus legs or even jellyfish legs so it could be like a jellyfish yeah they even were putting keychains to make it like it's a little keychain oh, wow. thing item so yeah there's a lot of different ways you can make this guy a little work oh my goodness i'm so excited about these <laughs> i want to see if i can make a really big one. Ooh, there you go well you got the yarn <laughs> okay uh, we do have a verse today and then we're gonna watch the littles so, uh, worry weighs a person down, and encouraging word cheers a person up. So, we're here to cheer you up. Worry weighs a person down, and encouraging word cheers a person up. That's Proverbs 12, 25. It is our goal in this channel to encourage you to do whatever it is that you do to the best of your ability, and to uh, cheer you up as we show our crafts and our, our uh, crochet and the yarn that we can use and the colors that they have and just all the things, you know, the size of the yarn, um, and the thickness, the thicknesses, the, the softness, how heavy the blankets can be if you use certain uh, yarns like this Bernat. And all the different things you know just we're trying to encourage you to do all the things that you can do and you know in in colors that you love and thicknesses that you love to work with and hook sizes or needle sizes that you love to work with and uh, to cheer you up and and to lessen that worry in your day you know we hope that our videos will take your stress level down and bring your joy up so yeah no for sure you know there's a lot going on in the day-to-day -day life that there's no reason to have unnecessary stress when you can have a good time yeah so um i've been looking into it i saw online that they t uh, that someone said that people who have like a um, crocheting and knitting craft or something that is repetitious and what it does it um, they tend to have uh, a greater um, outlet for anxiety and worry because they have that hobby in their life that creates a force of calm because it creates mm -hmm. a repetition in a, a place of like almost meditation yeah and consistency and a grounding point where it's that end of the day or that time of the day where they can just center yeah. quiet down chill out and so no matter who you are where you are what sort of craft or what level you're at uh, beginner intermediate pro 
just know that this month is for us. This is our month to be able to kind of center ourselves, think about what we want to accomplish maybe for the end of the year. This might be your time to, you know, maybe make something for yourself, like the, uh, the, uh, the shawl. But while you're doing it, get inspired for what you want to craft for Christmas. Kind of think about that. I know that sometimes I get, I feel like I can be a buzz whiz and just pop these out all the time, but that's not always possible. Maybe even just being like, I'm going to take a good two hours and look on Pinterest and see if I can try to plan ahead for Christmas so that I know how much material I'm going to need, yeah. what I want to make for my other people in my life. Things like that where it's like I'm giving myself time and then this month can be for me because I've already planned ahead. I've thought about other birthdays that haven't happened yet or whatever. Right. Anniversaries, whatever. I know that, you know, the first three months have happened, but like this might just be the month where this is just far enough away from the holidays not yet summer can feel like you can kind of plan ahead and maybe this is your time of year to do that right for up until the next april so yeah as always we're grateful that you show uh, uh showed up we're grateful to anyone who's made this far and hope uh you know comment down below Tell us what you're going to be doing for Situay Stress Month, what your projects are going to be, what your favorite fun toy is that you like to make, or just <laughs> item that you are very proud of. What are you going to do this month? Um, you know, even let me know if these uh, designs, like this blanket and this uh, toy, would be something that uh, w you would like to see in a pattern that you can actually get and have as the PDF. Let me know. Uh, someone who would just like to know that. Right. Like subscribe tell your friends yep and until next week um where we hope to see you again we hope that you stitch your way to mental health